So, my M4 iPad Pro is here, which means I need to check out some keyboard cases for it. So, let's get into it. Well, what's up guys, welcome back to Michael's Tech Talk. So, here we are with my brand new M4 iPad Pro, the 13 inch only iPad that you should buy. Yeah, I said it. What are you gonna do? I said it. <laughs> uh, I love a keyboard case, and I have been looking at a lot of different keyboard cases, and I have a few options here for you guys. So if you are looking for a keyboard case, this is the video for you. So let's check these out. So I have picked up a couple of cases in sort of different price points. So we'll start with the cheapest one. And it is this. So this is ESR's uh, keyboard case. And this is like their version of the Magic Keyboard. So uh, if you are familiar with the Magic Keyboard, you'll know it's a very, very similar design. We have this sort of silicone finish. We have this sort of hinge part here and all that kind of thing. Now I will say this is a lot thicker and a lot heavier. This complete case without the iPad on it is 1149 grams. So it's like one point one five kilos it's really heavy it is really heavy but what this case uh lacks for in lightness it makes up for in features so this case comes with uh obviously your, your keyboard case and it comes with this little cover which magnetically sticks which we will get to in a minute so we'll just set that there for now but this is the keyboard case and as you can see it is exactly what you expect it to be. Uh, it is a folio case, it's got the similar design and hinge that the Magic Keyboard has. It has a keyboard here, it has a row of function keys. It's pretty good. Now, where this differs from the Magic Keyboard is this is a Bluetooth keyboard. So, you have an on-off switch, you have a USB-C port to charge the keyboard. So you've got no dock connector on here, but if that doesn't really um, bother you, then it's not a big issue. And one of the good things with this keyboard is, if you have this keyboard for your previous edition version of your iPad Pro, so if you've got the M1 version, for example, this is fully compatible with the M1 iPad. So the iPad can magnetically stick on there, no problem at all, and you can use it as normal. No problems whatsoever. Now, if you are aware, Apple have changed the magnetic configuration on the older iPads and the new iPad. So the magnets are different. And when I say different, they have been switched. So the magnetic layout for the previous version repels the new iPad, if that kind of makes sense. So what ESR have done is they've made, a, they've made this case. So you just pop your iPad into the case like so. So there it is, it's a straightforward TPU case, but this has the magnetic layout for the new iPad. So it will allow your iPad to stick in. Also, it covers up your iPad as well, which is a good thing. So if you just pop your iPad in there, it will stick. And then you just turn on your keyboard and away you go. And it just works as normal. I've already this paired to my iPad Pro. And it's nice, I mean, if you look here, I'm not sure how well you can see it under the light, but it's got RGB keys. Um, I'm not sure if that's a thing, if you like that or not, but it's different. So it'll flick through the colors and stuff like that there. The keyboard is actually really, really good. Uh, it's good, clicky, responsive, and it feels like a really, really good keyboard. And the trackpad, this is one of the very, very few trackpad keyboards for the iPad that I actually like because a lot of them that I have tried have been really poor. They have really bad lag with Bluetooth. This one actually isn't bad at all. You see for this literally being a, a Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad, it is very, very good. So I'll just see if I can do a wee test here. Apologies about the angle from above. Uh, I can't really twist it too much, but this is a test. It is really, really good. And the trackpad as well, like I say, very, very good. Downsides, it is a bit thicker and it is heavier than the likes of the Magic Keyboard, but it's a third of the price. So you can fit two different types of iPad on it. 
uh, you've still got a decent keyboard, a decent trackpad, you've got great functionality, and it's still a compact case. It can fold up, protect it. It's not bad. Not bad for the money. I will say it is not bad for the money. So I would, uh, I would definitely recommend if you if you're looking for a keyboard case on a budget, you're just looking to do a bit of typing, a bit of browsing. This is a great option for the money, and I would definitely recommend it. So this is the ESR's keyboard case for the new iPad Pro. Next up on this list is this. This is the new version of the Logitech Combo Touch, and this is a case that I reviewed the very first time I got my very first 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Uh, I reviewed this alongside the Magic Keyboard and it hasn't really changed too much since then till now. So this is the new version of it and I'm excited to check it out. So if you didn't catch my previous video on the Combo Touch, uh, the design hasn't really changed that much. So we have our uh, case here, which uh, this is a like a kickstand case. So the bottom part will always pop out like that and it'll allow you to set your iPad up and it'll allow you to have all these different types of angles and all that sort of thing. Uh, it's really, really good. And then of course you've got your keyboard part here and your uh, trackpad. Now this is a dot connector case. So the keyboard and trackpad work through the dot connector. In my opinion, that is the much better way to use a keyboard case on an iPad Pro. And then the good thing with this is as well, you can disconnect your keyboard. So you've got options here, but we'll, show, we'll go into that in a bit more detail in a little minute. And the weight of the Combo Touch is 664 grams. So it is uh, not badly weighted at all, in my honest opinion. But uh, let's just pop the iPad into the Combo Touch. Now, one thing I have noticed, they have changed it up a little bit. Now, they have changed uh, the material. It used to be like a fabric which I actually kind of liked because it was grippy and it was different. They've kind of went down the same route with the Magic Keyboard with a silicone type material. It's a fingerprint magnet, it gets dirty really quick. I kind of wish they had kept the previous design, to be honest, but it is what it is. Uh, then that finish carries over then to the keyboard. So we gain with silicone finish all the way around. We've got that fantastic keyboard, uh, which Great, great keys, great clicky tactile keys. We've got that function row as well, which was the main selling point for me on the Combo Touch last time because it, while the Magic Keyboard didn't have those function keys, this one did and it was so good. And then the trackpad now, they've made the trackpad a little bit bigger and look at the size of this thing, it is massive. It is really massive and it's a physical trackpad. So as you can see there, you can and sort of click it all the way around, which is pretty good. This is magnetic then along here, which has your dot connector, which then can uh, connects in. So it is really, really good. So we just magnetically stick that on like that, and then you just pop out the kickstand like so. And there you go. There's no Bluetooth or anything with this. This is literally a keyboard case, and I can actually just give this a little bit more of an angle so you can see what I'm typing. So we just say this is a test of the combo touch keyboard. And there we go. We uh, great, great keyboard, great trackpad. Uh, cannot fault that at all. Really, really good, really, really responsive. And again, you have got this uh, option here you know that you can go really really low if you like to draw and also on the top we have this cutout here for your apple pencil uh, i have recently picked up the apple pencil pro and it just clicks on there now part of me would kind of like to this to have been uh completely covered um it kind of messes with me a wee bit to be honest uh i would have liked it to have been a full covered case but it is what it is or even a flap to maybe cover the pencil but it's not a deal breaker it's still a really really good case now one thing i will say is if you just look here see at the bottom of the screen the silicone bumper of this case is a wee bit sort of ski with it's a bit crooked and a bit all over the place uh i would like maybe a wee bit more quality control from that really really good option and you can you can have this sitting on your desk and you can literally just disconnect your keyboard you can just set up there if you want to draw, if you want to draw or you want to do whatever you want to do, you've got that option there with those. If you want to take a FaceTime call, you can pop it up. It's it's all good. That is one of the things I do like about this case. Also, 
you've got options with this keyboard. So you can obviously click that on and just use it as your keyboard case like that. And then if you fold it over, it'll cover you up and you've got a full protective case. And this is like a, this is an aluminium back as well, which uh, is very, very nice, but I would say it's going to get really scratched. Uh, we've got this sort of TPU bumper around the side here, so it'll kind of give you the tiniest little bit of lift up protection from your surface. But as you can see there, there's it's covered in fingerprints already, which is crazy. Also, one of the cool things I do love about this is if you take your keyboard case off and you maybe forget it, what you can do is you can actually take your keyboard case and flick this around like that and it'll stick and then you can fold it around like a book and it means you're, you can still use it in tablet mode just normally but you're not forgetting your keyboard and because you can do it like that, keyboard stays protected as well but also see when it's folded up like that, the trackpad and keyboard disable so it's not going to input anything on your iPad either which is really really good really really good feature and it's a well thought out thing and I really do like it uh, I picked this up direct from Apple for 259 now it's a little bit more expensive than what the previous version was but it's still cheaper it's about 90 pound cheaper than the magic keyboard so if you are looking for quality keyboard but you don't want to pay magic keyboard money I would definitely recommend you look at the combo touch because it is a really good option. So that is the Logitech combo touch. And lastly, it's the magic keyboard from Apple. So uh, I did order this. If you did catch my unboxing video of the new iPad Pro, you will have seen that I did order the magic keyboard as well. It is expensive, but in my honest opinion, it is worth it. The previous version of the Magic Keyboard, in my, own, my honest opinion, was a solid 7.5 out of 10. This is now, in my opinion, this is now a 9.5 out of 10. It's nearly perfect. It's nearly perfect. But I'll get into why it's just not quite perfect yet. And of course, we'll weigh the Magic Keyboard, so we'll just pop that on there. 665 grams. So it's more or less the same weight as the Combo Touch. Uh, give or take, which means those two are the lightest keyboard cases I have found for the iPad Pro. So that's pretty sweet. Now on the outside, the Magic Keyboard still has that silicone finish, right? Gathers fingerprint, like all of these cases are silicone, right? And gathers all your fingerprints and fluff and dirt and anything. If there's anything that falls on your desk, this thing's going to catch it. What they did do, the biggest change for me was on the inside. They made the inside of it aluminium. And for me, that is a lot better. Surprisingly, because they've added the function row keys, you kind of think uh, it's going to maybe reduce your hand space when you're typing. It actually doesn't. They've actually moved the keyboard. So if we just compare these, now this is my four year old uh, first gen Magic Keyboard for my previous iPad Pro. So uh, excuse the, uh, the grubbiness of it, but I think after four years, it's held up quite well. But as you can see, like these uh, these bottom plates here are pretty much the same size, and you can see the change that they've made to the keyboard. So they've moved the keyboard up a bit. They've added the function row, but they've also changed the hinge on it as well. So when you put the uh, that version of the, key the keyboard up, this is the same one, and you can see this doesn't have as much of a tilt on it, and then you know you can see the differences that's been made that's really cool i do like that and the trackpad i will say now the bigger trackpad i was okay with this trackpad to be honest but i'm not mad at this trackpad at all and the haptics on it are absolutely brilliant so for the trackpad and the keyboard alone i would recommend the new magic keyboard if you're getting the new ipad pro absolutely there is other little things that i do like about it for example close the ipad you can see there, uh, the hinge, uh, the hinge moves with it when it closes. So when you have your USB cable in, you don't have to worry about your USB cable being at a different angle. It'll actually move with the hinge. I kind of like that. Now, what I will say is the viewing angle is noticeably different on the new Magic Keyboard. And yes, I think the balance is a little bit off, which is why it doesn't get a perfect for me. If you go to touch your iPad, you know, you see that? Now, for me personally, that's not really a big thing because I typically, when I'm using the Magic Keyboard, it's on a desk and I am usually editing with the trackpad. 
So I'm typically not touching the iPad, but you know, just I just think I just think the center of gravity is just not quite right with it. You know, it's it's not a deal breaker by any means. What for my use case and what I'm using it for, it is pretty it is nearly perfect. It really is. And I can't recommend the quality of this thing high enough. The only things for me that don't make this thing perfect is just that sort of off center. And do, do you know what? I don't think it's actually the, the weight distribution of the iPad. I think it's the hinge. Um, when you look at the hinge on the back, it's not flush. You can see the uh, the, fl the hinge is not flush, so it bumps, you know, against the surface. So, and because of that, I think that's going to get scuffed up really, really easy as well, which uh, I'm dreading the day that ever happens. And then, of course, the silicone. I don't like the silicone. Uh, I know all these cases are silicone, but I don't like it. It just, it, it gets grubby and bleh. Other than that, keyboard, fantastic. Trackpad, fantastic. All the function rules, keys, fantastic. Maintain the pass-through charging, which leaves your Thunderbolt port open for accessories, SSDs, that kind of thing. That's a big thing for me because I do a lot of my editing from my iPad Pro. Uh, being able to use that Thunderbolt port, top notch. It's not cheap, but it is worth it. That is my three cases for the iPad Pro. What do you guys think? I think I've listed things here in different price points because I think there's something here for everybody. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you do want to pick any of these up, I will leave you links to where I find them down below. Uh, affiliate links help support the channel, but they don't cost you guys any more money. So if you do pick up using any of my links, thanks for your support. Much appreciated. Stay tuned. I will be covering more iPad accessories. I'm going to be getting a collection of screen protectors, which I'm going to do a showcase of. I'm going to pick up a lot of different styluses which will be alternatives to the Apple Pencil Pro, so stay tuned for that video. And of course, if there is anything else that you wanna see for the iPad Pro, let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you wanna see and I will make it happen for you. So that about wraps it up for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, smash that like button for me and don't forget to click that subscribe and ring that little bell to be notified of new videos just like this one. I'm gonna go, keep logged to the channel if you want some more down-to-earth tech review and accessory videos, you know where to come. And until the next one, I'll catch you later.